Hi, it's Prepper Kiwis Carolyn and Rose. On this channel, we talk about all things prepper related. In this series, we're going to be talking about beekeeping basics. I'm in the kitchen and I've just been processing some honey. I thought it might be a good idea to do a video and show people how I do it and hopefully someone finds it useful. I'll just walk you through the setup and what I did. I've got a box of honey here. It's one of those three quarter with the pink frames that you get from Ecrotech. I did a video about taking this off the hive. And I've got it inside one of these plastic boxes that you get from the supermarket. The reason I have it in that is because it keeps it safe from bees trying to get into it, but it also keeps it safe from um, leaking out all over the floor and making a huge mess because honey is and wax are ridiculously messy. I've got that sitting on a couple of chairs. It's a really, just a couple of bench stools. It's a really easy setup. And from there, I just work systematically through these and I scrape all the wax and honey off and I just use my regular hive tool. I haven't gone and bought anything special. I just scrape it all off into this stainless steel sink that I got my hands on. It seems to do the trick. It's just got a normal uh, exit down here that goes into um, a strainer and a bucket. I'll show you that in a second. And I just scrape it all off in here. And this grid, there's a grid around the outside in here. And what that does is it just stops the bulk of the wax from going down the plug hole and into my smaller grade um, sieve underneath. It takes a little while but I think that is worth it and that's just how I do it. From there underneath I just double check that I've got everything in order down here and the honey comes down and it lands in the sieve and then it slowly goes into the bucket below. I've never had it overflow this sieve there are bigger ones that you can get and I probably should because this is a little bit hairy the way it sits on the edge of this it could overflow when I wasn't watching it and I do leave it unattended and the reason that I do that is one because I know it comes through slowly because of the um, just the nature of the plug above but also I've got this large bin this large bucket that the bucket sits inside of and inside there I've got water which acts like a moat to stop any bugs, any um, ants that think they're going to get into my honey and have a party. That's not going to happen. It takes quite a while for the honey to come down into this area and um, I usually leave it overnight but I've got all the time in the world so it's different depending on uh, how much time you've got. Um, you could, I could stare at it for ages just watching the honey go down into that bucket but yeah I don't but it looks pretty cool and then I can either leave it in these buckets or I can put it into smaller jars or I can um, make something with it and the sizes of the jar that I tend to use now are these larger AG type jars just because um, if I'm making something I can quite often use at least a half a jar and then if I want to put it in something smaller I'll do I'll put it into here if I want to give somebody some of it so this is actually fully drained drained enough for me what I'm going to do is take that sieve and it does have wax and honey in it and then I'm going to take the rest of this and I'm going to put it over into this pot here for my next project I'm going to be separating um, the wax from the honey with heat. I'm quite interested in the heat type methods. And my neighbor has brought over a recipe for some Sicilian spread that they make over there and have been making for thousands of years. So that's what I'm going to try and do. And the next thing to do also is to return these to the hives tomorrow so that the bees can clean them up so that I can put them into storage. So keep an eye out for that video. See you next time.
Policeman taps the sages at a Chevy 69. Albazar.